Hey guys, I'm a Diamond Nico support main. This is going to be my Nico vs Yumi support guide. I'm going to be uploading a guide once a week on Friday, so if you enjoy it, upvote it and come join my stream, it would really help a lot. Please enjoy. When I'm playing Nico vs Yumi, I like to run Electrocute. I know a lot of Nico supports like to run Aftershock, and this is perfectly fine if this is your playstyle, but I like to try and get leads in my lane and snowball the game. If this is your goal too, you should probably run Electrocute. Now the reason you would run Electrocute over, say, Arcane Comet in this matchup is because Yumi has actually a lot of heals. If you're trying to just poke with Comet on the Yumi or the ADC, Yumi will just heal it all back up and it's not going to be as useful. Electrocute is really useful because you can get the burst kills. If you land that root on Yumi, she is just going to die instantly. She is so squishy, it's unreal. The rest of the tree is very personal preference. I like Taste the Blood because it'll help you with a little bit of sustain versus Numi's poke, but Cheap Shot is also very good at getting those burst kills that I was talking about. Ghost Poro is good if you're facing an aggressive early jungler. It's going to give you some early vision down, and you're going to proc all 10 of them much faster and earlier in the game. But Zombie Ward is also a very good option if they have, say, a weaker early game jungler, because Zombie Ward is very good for late game vision. You can go out and clear the wards, you'll get defensive vision down, and then place your wards aggressively, and now you have defensive and aggressive vision. Finally, Relentless Hunter is probably the best because it'll let you move around the map quicker, but there are other viable options. There is Ravenous Hunter, which can be okay, it'll give you extra healing on your spells, which is good, but probably the weakest option here. And then there's also Indigenous Hunter, which can be very good. If you're building all these items that have CDR on them, Indigenous Hunter will lower their CDR and will also lower the CDR on your trinkets. If you get Ravenous Hunter and Indigenous Hunter, you're going to 100% want to get Boots of Mobility. If you get Relentless Hunter, it's a bit more forgiving and you can get Sword Boots if you want. For your secondary tree, I've been running Hex Flash actually. It's actually a lot stronger than you would think. Hex Flashing out of a bush with a root can just get you a free kill. Hex Flashing over a wall into a root, or even just roaming and getting over wards by Hex Flashing over walls. This will be actually very useful, and once you play around with it a lot, you'll get some free kills. The reason I've stopped taking uh, Perfect Timing is because Perfect Timing only counts as 250 gold towards the total build path. So if you use Hex Flash and even get one kill for you or your carry, that's already 300 gold. So you've already made back the money you saved on the perfect timing, and you can use this throughout the whole game. Next, I take Biscuit Delivery because Yumi actually has a lot more poke than people would like to think. Level 1, it's okay, but once she starts getting a few points in that queue, she can actually start to really hurt you, and you're just going to want this so you can stay strong and find those roots. For your core items, you're going to want to get Eye of Frost, Boots of Mobility, and always pick up two control wards whenever you back. You're not going to want to upgrade Eye of Frost past this point because it actually becomes less gold efficient after you upgrade it and you only get one extra ward. With the Boots of Mobility, you'll be able to just go back and fully replenish the wards you had, so honestly, don't upgrade this until you already have 40% CDR. For the rest of your build, you're going to want to build Zhonya's Hourglass probably about 90% of the time right away. This item just allows you to go for really aggressive flash plays and Zhonya's and then you can just sneak out or if their whole team focuses you out of it, that's still more time they're spending on you. It's a very good item on support. Next, you're going to want to get either Proto Belt or Shirelia's. I go Proto Belt if I'm snowballing because it can just allow me to snowball more, but if I'm falling behind or my team's behind, Shirelia is honestly a lot better. It's a cheaper alternative and you can use it to help your team kite away if they're running or you can use it to still find engages. After that, you're going to want to get either Twin Shadows or Banshees. If they have a lot of AP, you know, you're going to get the Banshees or you can get that even earlier on if it's really a problem. And Twin Shadows is just a good item for late game when you're trying to get vision down and they could be camping a brush anywhere. You just pop that, you can run out, get vision, or you can just use it to combo with your Shirelias or Proto Belt to get a pick. For your ability level order, I like to take Q level 1. Make sure when you're going for your Q that you try to land it on the ADC. Trying to land it on the Yumi is just going to let her auto attack you and get her shield. And then when she goes in her ADC, now he has a shield too. So try to just distance yourself from the Yumi and try to just land Qs on the ADC. Level 2, once you get your E, you can start looking for roots on either the ADC or Yumi. If you land a root on Yumi, you'll be able to put your Q on top and auto attack to electrocute proc and this will almost get you a kill every time. If this doesn't get you a kill at level 2, once you hit level 3, she will be dead. Once you have your W ready by auto attacking 2 minions, you land the EQ auto attack with electrocute on Yumi, she is going to go from 100 to 0. On a lot of matchups, I like to put 3 points into Q first, but into this matchup specifically, I like to start maxing my root because 
it increases the length of the root. And if you land a really long root on Yumi, she's just going to die. If you don't have the extended root duration, she may be able to slip away at one health into her ADC and just wait until she's health regen to come back out. So I would really recommend maxing your root first into this. W second because it increases the movement speed of it and reduces the cooldown, which is really good for just engaging and checking brushes. And finally, max your Q last as it's not very important in this matchup. I'm maybe gonna hex flash over this wall and catch this girl. <laughs> so easy. I just like the colors. Damn guardian blocking my poke. Back up, Bane. Good thing I really missed that. Uh oh, that was a terrible trade, because Yumi's gonna get heal level 2 and just heal that crap up. I hate Yumi. Okay, I got good poke back at least now. Yumi can act really aggressive right now, but as soon as I hit 2, if she tries that crap, like, I'll just kill her. I have Electrocute and my thing, so if Yumi walks in for an auto on me, she's in for a surprise. See, she can't do that anymore now. That's why you take Electrocute versus Yumi. Her health pool is so small. Guardian Yumi is actually so annoying. I'm gonna pop my biscuit here to get some mana back. When these melees die, we're gonna hit this one melee. I'm gonna hit level three off that. See, I don't ever lose lane. These people, I, I don't know why I gave that person last game support. I don't lose lane. I give up support and then they lose lane. Thank you, thank you. We kind of like that that jungler wanted us to help her, but we, me and Vayne knew we could just like completely destroy. Because Ezreal and Yumi were playing over aggressive. And then Ezreal made the mistake of TP in the middle of lane. My ADC is saying sorry. Sorry for what, bro? We just turned up. Nothing to apologize for when we just freaking kill everyone. I wanted to row mid, but this guy is going back, so now I may not. But I'm just going to put a ward down here to stop Volley Bear from flanking us through the jungle. That ward there is going to stop anyone from coming behind. If they have a jungler that can go over this wall, it can be different, but because they don't. So they have this warded. She said Ezreal had no flash. What was that lie? I'm looking for an E flash right now. Never mind, his his E's back up, so.
Easy peasy. Yeah, 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 yeah.